Hello, hello, and thanks for joining me once again. Where I'm back from holiday. I have returned. I've had a hell of a week catching up from two weeks out, so it's been chaos. And suddenly, everyone's in Christmas mode. We're talking Christmas parties, we're doing all this kind of weird stuff. And yeah, everything's gone mad. So I thought I would have today a nice, relaxed day. Do a nice little video about doing something easy. Doing something just like, I don't have to stretch my brain too hard. I can do something really, really straightforward. Uh, and that's not really what we do around here. Uh, so, I thought, what's easier than just grabbing some data, being streamed into an event hub, and landing it down into a Delta table that's just automatically kept up to date? And then we've done that before, and there's a load of code, and we use Spark, and we can do those bits and pieces. But what I want to show you today is going from Stream Analytics. So that is the Azure streaming tool, deliberately meant to be low-code. It depends if you consider a SQL low-code, but you can write a little snippet of SQL. And that'll take data from various different input streams through a SQL query and write it out to various output streams. And the big news is you can now do that to a Delta table. So if you want to have data in a lake in Delta written to automatically from an event hub by something using just a SQL query and a couple of clicks of a button, we can now do that without a Spark cluster running, without anything else running, with no other infra running. So that's what we're going to do today. So, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know how you get on. Are you using Stream Analytics for many things at the moment? I mean, personally, it's a little limited for me compared to the full glory of Spark streaming. But for those fairly easy use cases where you just need a little SQL transformation, it's so easy to use and it's so quick to get started with. There's real use cases for it. And I'm going to be interested to see how much people are actually using it currently. For me, I haven't looked at it for a while, but I'm excited that it can use Delta. So let's go and have a look. So let's go first. There's a nice big blog. It is in preview currently. It's good to know. Um, and essentially it's just a new connector. It's a new output source. Uh, some limitations we're going to need. So we'll go through some of this setup things. Uh, a few things that it can do. The things that it's good to know. One, depend only. So you can't be doing merges. There's no for each batch. Put it into a merge, write different things and all that kind of stuff. It's just appending into a Delta table. It can create the Delta table for you. Um, but once it's done, it's not very good at doing um, schema evolution. So if your input changes and you get kind of schema drift, additional columns, that kind of stuff, it's going to ha manage that through the stream analytics schema um, error handling stuff rather than anything else. Uh, other bits and pieces, can't do dy dynamic partitioning uh, and we can't do checkpoints. Uh, so it's not going to do checkpoints in stream analytics to work out where you have and haven't written from. So it's not the same as if you just stop and start it going from an event hub if you're using Spark Streaming, it's not going to create that checkpoint metadata file inside the lake for you. It's using Stream Analytics' own start, stop, go from this point, restart as of this point. It's using the Stream Analytics mechanisms for doing that, not the Spark metadata in the lake style way of working with it. So they're the big things to know. But if you're happy with that, then that's all fine. So a little bit of setup first. So inside Azure, I've got, I've got an event up. So I just... This morning, went through, created an event hub. So I'm like a new event hub. I want a new namespace in there. So I've got this online sales data namespace, an event hub called sales inside there. If you haven't used event hubs before, it's just it's just an event bucket. It doesn't know what its own schema is. It doesn't have any information. I just created all these things, next, next, next. And then I fire information into it. So I've got this as an endpoint. This is this as a destination I can just fire events into. And that's sitting there. It's not really knowing much. It's just waiting for events to be set over and then over in a little vs code snippet of python i've got a little thing that just connects to my event hub i've got some connection details and that kind of stuff in there i've got a little thing to just randomly make up some numbers uh pump pump that into a json message and then just ping that into my event hub so this is like a stream simulator i've got going in the back and i can just start this thing um, and it's just going to go off creating these messages this is simulating load. This is my various tilt systems sending events into my event hub or my IoT sensors in a in a big factory kind of giving me my, my various different sensor info. I have some kind of load. So I'm going to leave that running in the background. Uh, and then if we're in here, you can see it's when I stopped it last time. If I refresh that in a minute, we'll suddenly see this uplift as it starts receiving events. So we're starting to see things coming in. So that's the starting point. And you assume... We're not really working with it here. We're just, someone's told you, oh, by the way, there's an event hub there. There's data in there. You should load from there into somewhere else, into a Delta table, into something. 
So this is just a little setup. We've got an event hub that's now receiving some data. See, can we refresh it? Can we see that there's some data coming in yet? It normally takes a minute or two before we actually sort of see the uplift. Thinking about it, are we going to get an uplift? Uh, no, not yet. All right, we'll come back and have a look at that in a second. So we've got that set up. Uh, on the other side of things, we obviously need a lake. So I've got my lake that I used to play around lots of things with. I've got that sat there. I've got lots and lots of stuff in there. It's the worst kept lake known to man, which is upsetting to me, but it's fine. Um, and that's, I need to hook those two things up. So I've got my event hub. I've got my lake. And I need to create that thing in the middle that reads from that event hub, processes the data via a SQL query, and pushes it to my delta table. And that's where stream analytics comes in. So we're going to go in here. Going to get create a new version of that. Let's just go and spin it out. Um, we're going to create a new stream analytics job. I'm going to hook those two sides of the fence up. So create a new. Okay, there, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create this new streaming delta. Oh, no. I'll slap it in my Synapse uh, resource group. I'm going to call it streaming delta. Um, now, region is, is, a, is an awkward one right now um, because the current... Um, the preview is only available in West Central US, Japan East, and Canada Central, which for a European like me doesn't work that well, but it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to create it in West Central US just so we know it's in a supported region. So I'm going to make sure that is in West Central US. There we go. Uh, and we're not going to push it out to the edge. It's not going to run on my census. This is what it cloud hosted. And I want to be cheap, so I'm just putting it down to one streaming unit just so it's super cheap for me. Okay, next, 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 next. This is all fine. Just a quick demo. So that's going to create a new streaming analytics job, and I can go and do some stuff in there. As soon as that's created, I'm going to need to go to create the input. I need to hook up the event hub and tell it how to read from the event hub. I'm going to hook up the delta table, tell it how to connect to the lake, where to put the delta table, what to call it, all of that stuff. And then I can do the query, what's going to transform it in a minute. So we've got this. We have streaming delta. We have our new stream analytics job we can have a play with. So let's go and hook up that event hub. So I'm gonna, it's a streaming input. So this is the thing I'm getting data from. It's gonna, gonna be an event hub. I could do it from a file and stream from a file and that kind of thing, but too much sense. My sales stream of data. Uh, in this case, it's I'm just letting it automatically see what's in there so I can see my online sales data is there. I'm gonna check that. Sales has got the right uh, in the bucket, which is good. Uh, I'm gonna let it do a managed identity. So I could tell it its password. I can go and get the password from the event hub and copy and paste it in and hook it up. Or I can say just create a managed identity and that'll kick off a little workflow in the background. that will go and talk to my namespace and add this streaming analytics managed identity to that namespace and give it access. The data is in JSON format. If I was sending it elsewhere, then I'd do other things, but I've sent it as a JSON message. I might have partitioning and I'm trying to have multiple different consumer groups, all of that stuff. I'm being lazy and going, hey, it'll be fine. Just let's start streaming from that event hub. So you can see this identity propagation's kicked off. So this is the little service that's going to run in the background to go and talk to the event hub, tell it it's going to have access, set that stuff up in the background, and that'll take a minute or two for that to go through. So we'll go and do something else while that's actually running. But we've set up our input, which is good. Step one. Let's go and set up our output. So in this case, all these different things, you'll notice I don't have delta as an output. That's because it's still going to go into a lake. So I'm going to put it into my ADLS Gen 2 can say what this is called. This is my Delta destination. Uh, where is it? I've got a million lakes. Uh, put it into my general sandbox lake. Uh, what container should it be? Put it into the root of it. Going to use managed identity again. How should it put that data down? And this is where we now have that brand new Delta lake format. I'm going to say, I want you to create a Delta table for me. Next, it's going to create my transaction log. It's going to create the underlying parquet files. It's going to do all of that work for me. There we go. It's slowly actually getting around to finishing off my input file. So the Delta table path. So inside my lake, where do I want to go? So I'm going to make a new root folder. It's not really a different lake layer, but it'll be fine. And then this is my um, sales Delta file. So if we go and have a look in that root, we can see that stream directory doesn't currently exist. So we're expecting this is going to create that directory. It's going to initialize that Delta table, and then it's going to start adding parquet files in there. I can add partitioning if I wanted to. And then I've got some things about how often will it go and create things. So I've got a minimum rows. So if it got to 2000, it would go, okay, I can go and create a parquet file now. 
but I've also got a maximum time. So this is one minute. So every minute it's going to add more data to my uh, Delta table, no matter what happens. But also it needs to try and make sure it's got at least 2000 rows, but the maximum time takes precedent. So if it gets to a minute and it doesn't have 2000 rows, it's going to go, well, I don't have it. I'm going to do that anyway. And it's going to force that right out. So play around with it. Uh, but currently, every minute, at least, it's going to add some more parquet and it's going to add some things into my Delta table. And that's it. Then click Save. I'm going to go and create it. Now, it was giving me a little warning message there because my lake isn't in West Central US. So I'm going to charge the egress costs occasionally for these messages going across. Normally, you try and make sure things are in the same resource group to try and keep things quick and cheap. But don't have that luxury because of the preview limitations currently. Okay, so we've got both sides. So I've got an input got an output and now we need to tell it how to get from that input to the output what that should look like and that's done via our query let's uh let's go before we do that let's go make sure things are going through so i think we're still waiting for permissions on the uh namespace so that's not going to work until that's finished so currently it doesn't have access to go and query that event hub so we'll come back to that in a moment what we can do while we're waiting is come back to our um our event hub and just make sure we can see a load of messages coming in here so we should see there we go so we can see from when I turned on that Python script, there's now a sudden, okay, it's now getting around 400 messages a minute. Yeah, there's just this incoming data coming through, pushing stuff through so we can come and query it. So we know that's working. We know we have that whole Python script that's sitting in the background, throwing things away, working away. We know that is working, pushing data to my event hub. So I'm going to have some data to read. That's good. Let's come in here. Okay, then might work. We might get an error. Let's see how things are looking. So I've got my sales stream. It's going to go and see if it can do it. What it's going to do is it's going to try and sample that event hub. So it's going to see, has it currently got access to the event hub? Can it pull things out? Can we have a look at what's inside there? I'm assuming it hasn't quite got access yet. Oh, no, there we go. It has propagated. That's good. So you can see a load of information in here. Uh, we're just going to make that a little higher. Uh, can we see that easier? Can I? There we go. Okay, so we just... Go and hide that bit, hide that bit. You can see I've got this little overview of what the data is. So we can see the different columns. It's managed to pass that JSON. It's worked out the different bits of information that I've got in there. I can go and sample my data. And you can see it's pre-generated the query for me. So it's like, well, okay, you've got an input, you've got an output. So actually, as your first query, you can just, just pass it through. Select star from my sales stream and put it into my Delta destination. Now again, I could have multiple queries in here. So I can have it going to three or four different destinations just by having some different SQL queries in here. So I could be writing, just take the whole record and put it down there and then take an aggregate of the record and put it over there. Just take one or two columns with some transformations, put it over there and you just write it as a SQL query. There's nothing crazy with it. So for now, let's just do that. I'm going to save that query. That is just saying, just pass it through. Whatever data happens to appear into that event hub, write it down as a Delta table. Uh, and then if I go back to my student magic job, which I've now hidden away, I can go back over here and go, you know what? Let's just start it. Go and create that thing. I'm going to create it from now. Now, be careful with stream analytics. Because I've said start from now, any, any events that were already in that event hub, it's going to ignore. It's using the current start time as its watermark of when it should start getting records. Now, I did have an option to use a custom time, and I could have gotten back five minutes, ten minutes to when I actually first kicked that off. And then I'd get all those records as well. So each time you start and stop stream analytics, be wary of the start time, the stop time when you're doing it so that you don't miss events that have happened. If you've paused it for an hour, make sure you don't skip the hour. You do have some start and stop things, which is a little bit easier. It's just because I'm starting it for the first time. It has nowhere to start from. Makes sense. So this is going to sit there starting for a minute or two. This is spinning up the resources, spinning up some cute behind the scenes. It's not going to be able to get any records until it has started. Uh, but then once it's started, we should see it actually go and do some stuff. So what we're, I'm expecting to see is one, it'll say, yes, it started. Very good. Uh, two, it'll take a minute because we said that minimum, that maximum time is one minute. So every minute is going to be trying to do something and it'll be going to my lake, creating my Delta table and then start appending Parquet files into there. So if we go over to my, my lake again, if I hit refresh, I don't have raw yet. I still don't have raw. So I'm probably gonna have to wait a minute, then I can come back in here, hit refresh, and then I should see that stream folder get created because that's where I told it to write it to inside the lake. 
and then I actually be able to go inside there and see the table. Now, what I'm expecting is a couple of different transactions in here. I'm expecting it firstly just to create the table. So the first thing it does is just stand up that Delta table, a flat create, no data, and just create the schema, create the, the, the objects. Then a second transaction hits immediately, which is then going to be doing the creating the um, adding some data. The first load of parquet, the first stuff that goes in there, we should actually see that working. Let's go see. There we go. So I've got my stream folder. There we go my stream folder, my sales delta folder. And there we go. We've got a delta table. So you can see that does have parquet in there already. And if we have a look, I've got two transactions. First transaction is just doing this first setup. There's no add. It's not adding any of those data. Those two parquet files aren't included in this transaction. This is purely just a create table. So coming in here, it's got the name, it's got the description, it's got the schema. So it's got the full schema of the object it's expecting, and it is creating it via a format of this is an append only table. So it's using a particular type of, of settings for this. If we then take a step back, we've got our first transaction, and we can see it's going and adding a couple of things. It's doing it as a transaction. It's got some mess data around that. What you'll notice is it's a very rudimentary form of delta. So we, it's got the path, it's adding it into it. We don't have any captured statistics. So we don't have the number of records. We don't have the min maximum values for anything inside there. It is just writing it down to parquet files inside of that Delta transaction log wrapper. But it's still creating a Delta, Delta table for us. We go back, we should actually see it's oh, step back too far. Step in. There we go. It's getting more parquet files. And this is just going to keep going. So while this streaming job, while that stream analytics job's working, it's just going to be each loop, each cycle, adding more records into here and just going pushing it through. And that's that's basically it. So it's not doing anything else fancy. It's not going to optimize your jobs for you. It's not going to vacuum it for you. It's not doing any of the wider Delta management side of things. There's, there's no auto compact, auto optimize. There's no separate things like that. But what it is doing is landing the data in a Delta format and then you can have other things streaming from that delta. You can have other things reading that delta table and then landing it in a more efficient, optimized, heavily transformed state. But as an initial, can I just get data into my lake from an event hub and not have to put it as CSVs that I then add additional things to turn into delta? Really cool. So yeah, that is it. That is what we have currently. So Stream Analytics can now write the delta tables. It is still in preview very limited the regions that you can actually do it in but super super straightforward to get started working you know you say low code that is literally all the code we've had to write and i didn't even have to write that that was pre-generated for me that's pretty good so, short and sweet little welcome back from holiday look at something new weird and interesting we can now stream to a delta table using stream analytics in azure from an event hub and it's super super easy and we'll stop there so as always don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you get on with this. Do you using this already? Is this something you've been waiting for? Are you one of the people in the very few regions it's supported? And you're like, oh, yeah, this is useful. Always good to hear what you guys think. And then I'll catch you next time. Cheers.